Hello everyone, so as you can all tell by the name of this video that the uh, Mogglemancer won the vote. For the people who don't know what I'm talking about, or you know, follow me on Twitter, uh, I made a poll asking which guide I should make next between Mogglemancer or Ninja because I received about the same amount of requests for both uh, to make a guide for Ninja and Mogglemancer. So I thought it would be a really cool idea to interact with you guys and let you guys vote and and well, let's just say Mogglemancer won the vote, so let's get into this. Though there's no bonus for your auto attack, so we'll skip that and go into the skills. So Moglin Zeal is the passive ability for Mogglemancer. This ability will increase your attack speed for 2.5 seconds. I checked the wiki and it didn't display the percentage and hovering over the skill still does not display the percentage. Not only that, in the class tab under skills, it still does not show the percentage. So if the percentage is posted somewhere, please do put it in the comment section for other players to read. Mogglemancer has four abilities that will grant you bonuses based on which one you use. You have Zorbax Bane, Twilly's Blessing, and Twig Zeal. Your ultimate when it hits an ally will also grant them a buff based on your active stance. Zorbax Bane empowers your auto attacks and will grant you 100% crit to 10 nearby allies for 3 seconds. Technically it's 9 nearby allies because it will always buff yourself which includes you as one of the 10 players. Zorbax Bane will also increase your auto attack damage while this stance or presence is active, using other Mogul Master skill will change your stance. Twilly's Blessing will call a defensive shield up to 10 nearby allies for 25% protection. This will also turn your auto attacks into a heal, allowing you to heal your allies per auto attack in exchange for mana. Twig Zeal allows you to silence your target for 3 seconds and turns your auto attack into an ability that regenerates mana for each auto attack. You'll need to learn how to manage your mana with this ability so that way you can output more offensive, defensive, or supportive skills. Mogwin Punt is the Mogwimancer's ultimate ability. When using this skill on players, it will deal damage to enemies but buff allies hit based on the stance that you're in. Zorback strengthens, Twilly Blessing heals, and Twig Zeal hastens. So now we're uh, getting into the more interesting part of the uh, video as we go over the cross skills and PvP skills. Mogglemancer actually has a DPS setup which I don't recommend for dueling but it's pretty effective in fives, spe especially when you're queuing with one or two people doing duo queue or trio queue. There's also heavy support setups as well and overall Moglo has a decent list of skills that they can choose from. For PvP skills you're able to take block, refresh, mark, mend, recover, and dash, and for cross skills you always want to go rend over lucky shot. I don't really recommend lucky shot if you're playing Mogglemancer. If you want to go with a DPS setup I would always choose rend, and the reason why is because lucky shot is always a guaranteed crit, and by using your Zorbax Bane, stacking more crit doesn't affect the skill as much as uh, Zorbax Bane affects rend. So making rend crit, it actually has a higher end crit, and with the current damage test that I did specifically for this video, Lucky Shot hits for about 888 damage on the dummy, and when I used Darbax Bane to make my rend crit, it hit for 966. So if you go for a damage setup with Moglo, I highly recommend using rend over Lucky Shot purely for that reason. And then for the other skills, uh, you can use Presence of Mind, Holy Bolt, and Rune Siphon. Uh, you can use Rune Siphon because when you use your Twig Zeal, to generate mana from your auto attacks, you can then benefit from the Rune Siphon's double resource regeneration, making it so that when you use Rune Siphon, you will auto attack uh, times two more mana back when you have the zeal up and then presence of mind is also really good because it gives you a massive uh, bonus to your healing and it lasts for a very long time and you can stack that with your uh, Twilly's blessing so as your auto attack healing you can have presence of mind up for eight seconds healing for a larger percentage more for each auto attack now this is actually highly effective in a really big team fight and the biggest counter to this is fester um, however with the current meta changes 
is. Um, I do believe Presence of Mind will be making a comeback because this meta is mostly I've seen it's mainly a block meta now. Keep in mind, any form of healing that isn't a heal over time will be affected by your Zorbax crit. This means you can make Guardians heal crit, the healer's healing wave crit, your health pot crit, you can make mend crit, and any future healing that gets added into the game that isn't a heal over time will be able to crit from this ability. So when it comes to my setups, uh, I typically used to use, before the block change, um, Presence of Mind, Holy Bolt, uh, those two skills. I would use Palm for like larger scale fights, and if I was in finding myself in smaller team fights, then I would just stick to Holy Bolt. And then I would use Refresh and Pot. Um, I would typically use Pot over Block because back then, Pot was just a better option versus the old Block. Um, but with the new Block changes and the meta being primarily about block um i now run presence of mind or bolt and like i said it depends on the situation and then i use refresh and block now the reason why i use block now with my support setup is because for two seconds i can output healing without taking damage so the only counter to that would be fester or a silence which most players normally don't have anymore because of the block change for my dps setup i used to use uh rend mark and fester but with the block changes i now use rend mark and block overall this meta block is just too good to pass up on because block this is probably the best block will ever be in this meta i can't lie that's what i purely think i think block this is the best we're gonna get for block so on the target i can apply mark for 20 percent damage plus i can make the three out of the four seconds of that mark a guaranteed critical damage on top of hitting them with a high-end crit from rend lowering their armor by 40 percent now keep in mind this is where this setup really shines because not only are you doing guaranteed critical damage with 20% more damage stacked on top plus an armor rend or a armor break you will also have your team your partner or partners plural will also be hitting the target with the same 100% crit the 20% from mark and the minus 40% armor reduction from rend this will kill a player in less than three seconds I was really excited for this game. I don't know why, but I had a feeling I'd do good this match with the DPS Moglin setup. Look at my movement. I'm even doing the happy QE spam. So in this part of the clip, I wanted to pressure their healer as quick as I possibly could. So what I did was I immediately hit them with a silence, and then I went in for the high DPS rotation. I hit them with the silence. I then hit Zorbax Bane, and I canceled the animation with Mark, and then I followed it up with a rend, hitting the healer for a total of 1,527. This also made the healer leave C and immediately start running to A because at this point he knew that he would need his team or else he would end up dying. This part of the clip isn't really that fancy, it's just I was able to use my silence and kind of waste it on the healer buff. He wasn't healing, but I silenced his buff anyway because I seen that the lobster was up and I could reset my silence. So what the healer does here is he uses block because he's going to use healing wave. However, I silence it while he's in the block. I sacrifice the damage just to interrupt his heal, which then when he comes out of the block he is then forced to use his ultimate to reset his heal and his block so i in a sense made him waste his ultimate because he didn't use it for his team he ended up using it for himself just to survive so this clip here is actually literally why i love running a dps moglo time to time because the healer does the exact same thing uses block specifically just to heal just for the moglomancer to silence them they then do the most predictable mistake and use their ultimate to reset all of their skills including their block and heal i'm prepared for this and i see that the lobster is up so i race the healer to the lobster and i get it to reset my silence then the healer repeats the mistake that they made going up the ramp within like one second of the first mistake and uses block to heal again completely ignoring the fact that the moglomancer picked up the lobster so they should have known i had my silence ready and off cooldown so then i block or i silence them through the block yet again this makes the healer have absolutely no healing and they go down to a moglomancer so like the thing with mogul support is that you can always mix it up whether you need a silence first a crit buff or if you just need to heal first but in times of heavy healing i always go twilly's blessing first to make sure i apply the shield to everybody then i use presence of mind for 35 percent more healing and i keep auto attacking to get as much as i can out of the palm and keep the blessing on cooldown so that way i'm constantly reapplying the shield and when i run out of mana i just hit refresh this will let me gain all of 
of my mana back and I'm able to keep going and you know keep applying the blessing so I'm constantly still applying the AoE shield on everybody and not only that the refresh also makes it to where I don't have to use my silence to start regenerating my mana uh, as quickly and not only that if I'm being focused I can then block and for two seconds after I can keep progressively healing besides that I think I've gone over everything so thank you guys for watching and checking out my content if you want to see more and be up to date why not subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of my content that I make you can also find me on Twitter and I also stream over on Twitch and also check out our PvP community discord server where you can meet other PvPers in the AQ3D community. Take care everyone.